The Bering Sea pollock fishery is one of the largest sources of wild, sustainable seafood in the world. It is also an outstanding example of a successful, cooperative-based catch-share fishery. For many years now, the Pollock Fleet, seafood processors, and federal scientists have worked together to minimize environmental impacts, including salmon bycatch. This collaborative approach has resulted in the design of complex new nets that incorporate specialized excluder devices, which allow salmon to safely swim out of the nets. So there's a huge variation in the number of Chinook salmon that show up on the fishing grounds. And when they do show up, they show up in big numbers, and, and so there's a large political re, you know, reaction to that, and a large, um, I think, spiritual reaction to that, you know, by people who rely on Chinook salmon uh, up and down the Yukon River, for example. So I'm John Groover. I'm a retired Bering Sea Pollock captain and boat owner and I've been working at United Catcher Boats as an inter-cooperative manager for the last 11 years. Our salmon excluder project is a very unique project. It's a behavior-driven device. We're counting on a fish behavior to make it work, in this case salmon, to do something different than pollock. We wanted to create a lee, if you have it in a net, much similar to how a rock creates a lee in a river, and the salmon have a natural tendency to go behind that rock and rest when they're working their way upstream, and we thought maybe that would be the same thing. So we wanted to use the tank to learn how to create that lee. The tools that we have for us to, to develop an excluder in this case is a tool that's been used for years to develop fishing gear in general, and, and that's a flume tank. We use the one at Memorial University at St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, and, and those guys have, they see all the fishing gear there is in the world, you know, at one time or another, they get ideas from people everywhere. And these are great places to go, not just to test what you have, but to learn ideas from these guys that get so much exposure to other gear. And we thought, you know, we're going to give these guys a place to rest, and at the same time, maybe they'll swim out and go right out a large hole. And not the kind of hole that where you see them wiggle through in a cloud of scales and off they go, but a large hole. And so all these excluders we built have holes that are four feet wide, three feet wide, four feet wide, and up to 20 feet long. The facility here in Newfoundland continue, contains almost half a million gallons of water. It's the marine equivalent of a wind tunnel, but rather than studying the aerodynamics of things that fly through the air, we study the hydrodynamics of things that fly through the water. In this particular uh, project we're working on now with the Alaskan uh, pollock fishermen, we're looking at, uh, we've been working with, uh, with these guys for, uh, for several times for the past four or five years. They've been here three or four times looking at ways of uh, eliminating the uh, bycatch of salmon from the, from the pollock trawls. And, uh, it's quite interesting uh, piece of gear they're, they're working with and kind of a complex system when you look at the hydrodynamics involved in, in fishing gear and the behavior of that specific animal that you're trying to exclude. Uh, so it's a bit of a challenge, but it's, uh, it's quite an interesting piece of work they're, they're doing and uh, so far uh, from the results we're looking at uh, over the past couple of days have been uh, quite successful. We've done it like three times now and you know, had a decent idea of what it looked like but really needed to know uh, how it worked and how it, how it looks because in the future we're going to be stuck with some pretty stiff uh, uh, limits and the person that can perform better is going to have an advantage and I think that's that's what I'm looking for. You have to get rid of the salmon. Um, it's a reality that's going to come to us. We've got to make sure this works. We have to be able to get the salmon out of the gear so I'm efforting everything I can to improve my own excluders to maximum performance. We get a lot accomplished in the flume tank that would take months at sea, you know, because you can come here, drop a model in the tank, walk down, look through the window, you know, see if you get a result out of what you did, and if you don't like the result, it's a three minute haul back, <laughs> put some new chain on it, put a cut in it, whatever you want to do, and back in the water and get another look. We've done the salmon excluder experiment on the boat a couple times now, three times, and, uh, you know, you, you had it in your mind what the plan looked like, what, the, what it looked like in the water in your mind, but when you come here and see it visually and actually see the, how it how it moves in the water, how it reacts, and what it really looks like. And, and have the ability to, you know, like Jack said, in 10 minutes haul it out, make a change, and put it back in the water and, and see what it does. It gives you a, a whole different perspective of how to, how to adjust this when you're actually using it. The end result of this is when you go out fishing and you're having doubts in your mind and stuff, you have a whole wealth of people who have the same perspective of what you've seen. Mm -hmm. And you can bounce things off of people and, I mean, it's, that's invaluable. 
uh, the best part is that uh, we had a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds come, you know, folks from Nature Conservancy, yourself from a processor's perspective, you know, and fishermen, and what I like is that, that everybody had really got a good handle on the concepts here and, uh, and understand what people are looking at and got to see kind of the genesis of something new again, which is always cool. I think Dr. Rose said it best when he said, Sam, to escape from uh, uh, any of the devices we've been working on, this is a little bit of aerobic exercise for salmon and that's it. There's no impact on the fish other than that. In the Bering Sea, we had this rationalized pollock fishery. People know they can live to fight another day if they don't catch all their pollock this trip, or if they have to move in the middle of the trip, it's not the end of the world. And it makes all the difference. The industry can respond to these issues as they pop up much faster than a government can. Now the responsibility is to is to catch the fish that, that, that you have, but not endanger the future. And it's a big, big difference. Want to learn more about the Alaska pollock fishery, salmon excluders, or flume tanks? Become a member of the Sea Alliance community today.